Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I've got another classic bass riffs lesson for you and today we'll be dealing with six of my favourites from Rush, obviously played by the amazing Geddy Lee. As always, let me know what other bands you'd like to see covered in the comments below and also which other Rush riffs that you'd like to see in future lessons. Okay, let's start with a really popular Rush tune in Limelight from the Moving Pictures album. This is the opening riff that sounds like this. So we're pretty much in B major and the time signature is 7-4. Rush love their odd time signatures and this is a great example of how you can use an odd time signature like 7 and still make it catchy and fairly normal. So you know you can feel this quite easily without having to count. So we begin B, second fret of the A string and then we move up in a kind of extended power chord so we have B, F sharp, B. So second fret A string, fourth fret D string, fourth fret G string. Then we come down to the open A string and then we come up E and A. So same pattern just two frets lower on the open string. So open A string, second fret D string, second fret G string. So we have Okay, then we drop down to the open E, so. Then we come up. So we have F sharp, G sharp, A, C sharp, A, and then we're back to the beginning. So second fret, fourth fret, E string, then open A string, fourth fret, A string, open A string, okay? And that's it, that's the whole riff, you just play that round and round. Just as a little technical tip, when you're playing the B power chord there, we're not, you know, holding down any of the notes for any length of time, but when we come across there on the fourth fret, I'm joint barring there. So I'm using the kind of tip of the finger for the fourth fret of the D string, and then I'm just releasing pressure a little bit and just bringing the fourth finger back to play that G string with pretty much the joint there on the uh, on the fourth finger. So it's worth getting used to going between those two those two notes like that. I'm not barring the whole thing and and holding it down like a chord. I'm just playing a fifth pattern and then shifting all the weight across with that fourth finger. So, you know, when people try playing that to begin with, they often think that it's you know, like a whole chord that you're having to hold down, and you're not, you're just holding down one note at a time. So, that's the whole riff, so you want to start out slowly, then just build up speed. So, very slowly. A little quicker. And eventually you can try it out with the track. Okay. Bear in mind that I've got a counting of seven there with the hi-hat. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then you're in, okay? Just in case you, that was a little confusing. Um, these drum tracks are all available to play along with over at TalkingBass.net, so just follow the link in the info below. Next up, we have another classic with Free Will from the Permanent Waves album. Now, this riff comes in quite a few variations during the tune and even within just a few bars. So I'm just gonna give you the first main hook that plays behind the first verse, and it sounds like this. Okay. 
So, bear in mind that even the repeat of that riff has some variation in that it's kind of played back to front with the last half played first, but this should give you a good start in just putting it all together. Once you have the main notes down, you'll find the changes really, really easy. So we're in F with a kind of F Lydian vibe and the time signature in this song changes quite a bit. We've got 6-4, 4-4 and 7-4 all just within that first riff. But don't worry too much about the numbers. The best way to nail this is to just listen to it and feel it. Just get the notes under your fingers and it'll probably, you know, you probably won't have to think about the time signature. So the first part of the riff sounds like this. Okay, so we've got F twice, first fret of the uh, E string. Then we're up to the C, third fret of the A string. Then we're down to the B, natural there, second fret of the A string. Then the open A string, and then the G, third fret of the E string. Okay, so just get that under your fingers first. Okay, then we have... Okay, so once again... F and the C, 1st fret E string and 3rd fret A string. Then we have E, D, C, D, E. So E 2nd fret of the D string, D open string, C 3rd fret of the A string. So, and then back up through D, open D string, up to the E 2nd fret. So. Okay, so that's the second part. So we put both of those together. Okay, so that's the first half of the riff. The second half of the riff is almost the same as the first. So we begin with... But then for the second half we have... We come down on the E and the D, but then we play B natural to C, 2nd fret to 3rd fret A string, and then the open G, okay? I've seen some people play this as 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret D string, which is probably how, how I would have naturally played it, but I have seen Geddy Lee play this, and he does use that open string for the, uh, for the G, so... Now, little technical tip, when you move onto the open G there, because you're likely to get quite a bit of noise from uh, residual sound from the strings. When you move for the G there, it can help uh, with the muting to actually shift the thumb onto the A string when you play it. So, see where I've put the thumb there and that blocks everything off. You don't have to do that, but I just find that that really, really helps with the muting. As I mentioned before, there is quite a bit of variation on this riff as you work through the tune. So you might have the second half played first, or you'll just have the first half played or the second half played, you know, depending on what's happening in the vocal. So just get this bit down onto your fingers and then you'll have the majority of the material that you'll need for all the other variations that come. Once you've learned the riff slowly and gradually built up speed, you can try with the backing track. So I'll play with the backing track and I'll just loop it round and round. Next we have the song Marathon from the Power Windows album. This is back to good old 4-4 and it sounds like this. Okay. This song's in the key of B but we start on an F sharp 4th fret of the D string. So we have F sharp down to the B, 2nd fret of the A string, and then up to the B, 4th fret of the G string. So, okay. Then we have this quick little lick, so we've got two notes on the A, 2nd fret of the G string, down to the F sharp, 4th fret of the D string, and then back to the A, 2nd fret of the G string. So, just start out slow with that, and then just gradually build up speed. 
Okay, so all together. Okay, so you just loop it round and round, and that's the whole lick. But the tough part about this is getting this little, getting that bit down, okay, and it's the bit that stands out. It's quite percussive sounding. So if you really want to get some snap to it, maybe bring the uh, picking hand further down here, you know, really snap it out. Okay, and uh, also you can play that second F sharp in there a little bit more staccato just to give it more bounce. That one there after the two A's. Okay. Again, as always, make sure to start slowly and build up speed. So we could start at. A little quicker. And then you could try with the backing track. For the next riff, we have Force 10 from the Hold You Fire album, which sounds like this. So I'm going to work through the notes for this riff and then I'm going to show you a way to play it. But bear in mind that I've seen Getty play this riff in several different ways. So I'll give you a method that works and that should get you started with the riff. But feel free to try out other ways as well. So we're in the key of A minor and we begin on an A power chord there. So we're starting to use uh, chords here. So we've got the 7th fret D string and the 9th fret G string. That perfect fifth interval there, so I'm playing with the first finger and the fourth finger. You could play with the first and third finger if you wanted, but I find it much easier to play it like this. So I'm actually playing this with the first and the second finger like this, just because that's how I'm used to playing chords. But I have seen people and Geddy Lee play by just strumming with that first finger. Okay, so that's what you want to get down to begin with. Okay, so we've got this power chord here. And we slide it up, well, that's three frets, up to a C power chord, so the 10th fret, D string, 12th fret on the G string. Okay. Then we have some open A strings, okay? So we're just going to be pedaling on that A string. So I'm not going to go through how many that we play, but uh, just bear in mind that after you've played it, we, we move down into the, uh, into the pedaling. Then we have, we've got that chord moving between the C power chord and D power chord, okay? And between that, we've got pedaling, okay? So this is where it gets a little tricky. So we've got uh, the C power chord there, two pedals on the A, then up to the D power chord there, 12th fret D string, 14th fret G string. So. So after the D power chord, we play one open A, so. And then we're back, okay? Back to the C power chord. And then two open A's again, so. Same again. We do that three times, okay? So all in all, slowly. So that's the riff. It's just those chords and that pedaling. But it is a bit of a tricky riff because you've really got to go for it with the fingers. It's, it's, it, it's uh, a lot harder to play than it actually sounds. 
Now, in terms of the actual technical side of this riff, I tend to use that first and second finger for playing the chords, as I showed earlier, and then when it gets to the open A's, I do tend to use both fingers alternating for the open A. Now, I have seen Geddy Lee, I, I know that he does now play with one finger, so, you know, which is pretty tricky to do. Um, but if you want to build up some stamina in that first finger, then, you know, knock yourself out, just go for it. But I do tend to play with um, alternating fingers, which is how Geddy used to play it. If you watch the Show of Hands video, you will see, you will see him alternating the two fingers. So, that's just a tip on that. Now, when I do get up to this bit, I do tend to just use that first finger when I'm coming back onto the A. You know, you can spread it out if you want by, you know, alternating on the on the twos. That'll make it a little bit easier, but it will be a little bit more to think about. But um, I just tend to use that first finger, and then I, I kind of get uh, get some stamina back when I'm actually doing the alternating on the next time round. So um, yeah, just. Now, this is one of those riffs I would definitely advise you to start slowly because, you know, it's going to be a bit of a workout in terms of stamina. You really want to nail the rhythm of those chords and alternating coming back to the open string. You know, there's a lot of things to think about, even though there's not actually that much to it. So, definitely start out slowly. So... And uh, while I'm just thinking about it, uh, there, just as a little tip in terms of keeping everything clean and, you know, avoiding a lot of noise, when you're actually playing this riff up here, you know, you're coming between the chords and the, uh, and the open string, you're going to be wanting to keep the thumb out of the way because, you know, obviously you need that A string to ring. But when I come back, back up to the, uh, to the beginning of the riff, I do tend to put the thumb on the A string there. And that keeps everything nice and clean down there. Once you've built up enough speed with the riff, you can try with the backing track. Now, the backing track that I've supplied has got that, uh, that drum beat on there that you hear for quite a few bars at the beginning of the tune. So, you know, you can just start it and then just come in whenever you want. So there's the beat. Next up, we have the opening riff from the song Turn the Page, also from the Hold Your Fire album. And again, we're using chords in there, so it sounds like this. In terms of the notes, we've got another extended power chord up here at B, okay? So we have B, 14th fret of the A string. Then we have the F sharp, 16th fret of the D string, and the B again, 16th fret of the G string. Okay, so I'm holding the B down on the A string with the first finger, and then I'm just barring across with the third finger for the 16th fret, okay? And that's it, that's the chord. Now you're gonna have to bar with this finger as well, with the first finger, because we're going to be going between the 16th fret and the 14th frets on the D and G string. So get used to that chord first of all, then try taking that third finger off, and then just try holding that first finger there straight across. So we've got A string, D string, and G string all on the 14th fret. They're the two chords that you need to learn. Once you have the chords under your fingers, then it's just a case of messing around with the rhythm. So, we start with the F sharp and the B there, 16th fret on the D and G string. And I'm playing with those two fingers there. And then we play the B, 14th fret of the A string, with the thumb. Okay, so, and we play that twice. Then we drop down to the 14th fret, like I showed you, on the D and G string, so. So once again, after we've played that chord, we hit the uh, the B on the A string. So we're always going to be alternating, coming back to that B. So and 
then we move back up to the 16th fret again. So very slowly. And when you hit that, uh, the 16th fret again, you want to play that quite staccato, so quite short. Then we move back down to the B again, play that. And then we play the 16th fret again, so it's just a repeat. And then back down to the 14th fret, and then back up to the 16th fret. So again, we're just alternating between the chords and then just picking out the correct rhythm. So I'll just play it all very slowly. Okay, so we play that riff four times and then we just shift the entire thing down to the A flat or G sharp. So that's going to be the uh, the 11th fret of the A string, then the 13th fret of the D and the G string. And we just played the same riff. Okay, so all together we have. down there. So try playing it slowly but while you're playing it slowly you will probably start to feel quite a bit of soreness on the fingers here as you're holding down these chords especially on that first finger because you've really got to bar it across those strings so you know if you're playing it slowly for a long time you know it's going to start pushing but you know persevere and you will build up the callus and then eventually once you get it up to speed it should sound like this. Finally, I've left the toughest riff to last, which is the main riff from YYZ, which sounds like this. This tune's in F sharp minor and has a lot of notes, <laughs> so you will have to put in quite a bit of practice. So we begin with an A, two notes on an A there, second fret of the G string. Then we come down to the F sharp, fourth fret of the D string, and then back to the A at the second fret again, so. Okay, so, so far so good. So we've got, then we come down, F sharp, F, E, so that's 4th fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret of the D string. And then we end on the C sharp, 4th fret of the A string. So, you know, you have to build up speed, but start slowly and just stick at a tempo you can deal with. You don't want to get sloppy with this. So you start out, you know, however slow you've got to go and stick at that uh, tempo for a while just with that intro and then gradually build up speed on that, okay? So that's your first phrase. Next we have the same set of notes, A, A, F sharp, A, F sharp, F, E, C sharp, all played as a stream of 16th notes. Then we have B, C sharp, F sharp. So second fret, fourth fret, A string, and then the second fret, E string, okay, with that rhythm. So. Really slowly. And as you build up speed. 
Oops. Okay. Now, believe it or not, just learning those two phrases, you've pretty much learned the whole of the riff because even though it goes on for quite a bit longer, a lot of it is repeated, okay? So, we repeat those two phrases. Then we shift the entire pattern up to the fifth fret. So we're starting on the C fifth fret of the G string, okay? We just play the same thing again. And here's where we have the little variation we have. We work down as far as the fifth fret, that G, and then we have... So fifth fret down to the seventh fret of the A string, so fifth fret the G on the D string, and then down to the seventh fret the E on the A string. So... Just going between those two. Then you can slide down and we start all over again. Then back up. And on the final time, we just play that phrase twice. Okay, so that's the whole thing. That's the whole of that riff from YYZ. Now, obviously, the, uh, the actual composition YYZ goes on for ages and there's lots to it. There's lots of different riffs in there, but this is that main riff that you hear after the uh, odd time section. So, you know, this is what I would consider the, one of the toughest parts in there because it's so quick. So you want to start really slowly with this. Just, you know, start as slow as you can and then just stick around on that tempo until you nail it and then just build up speed. In terms of the technique, I'm pretty much using alternating picking a lot of the time. So I'm starting on the A, a there with the first finger here, so alternating, and then I'm hitting that C sharp there with that second finger of the picking hand. And then it's just all alternated throughout. And then when it comes to the, I'm starting with that first finger again. And then you can actually rake on the final drop down from the G to the E. But apart from that, it's all alternated. So once you're up to speed, you can try with the track. <laughs> Oh, that's six classic riffs from Rush. <laughs> Bit of a tongue twister. Remember to let me know which other riffs that you'd like to learn in the comments below and like this video if it's helped. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I release a new lesson every Friday. And if you go on over to the Talking Bass website, there's hundreds more lessons over there, all organized in the lesson map for ease of navigation. So just click on that link in the info below and I'll see you next week.